Hello everyone and welcome in this third video of Animal Task Tutorials. Today we will see how to prepare the videos for the tracking. Just as a quick reminder, before we saw in two other videos how to install the program and then how to create a project and manage the videos inside this project. So if you missed these two videos, I invite you to go to check them inside this playlist before this one. For today, what we will see is how to prepare videos for tracking. So in our main project, we have a kind of table with one row per video, and we will go now a bit more in the details and see the meaning of the columns of this table. A uh, first little tip that I will give you uh, today is please always work from left to right and then top to bottom. So it's, it's one of the principles of Animalta that you will, for instance, if you are working th with this video, you will first do this part of the table, then this part, this part, this part, and so on. And later you will do this button, then this button, this button, this button. So always from left to right and then top to bottom. In this video, we will explain each of these steps, but uh, feel free to jump to another time code if you're not interested in the details of some of the steps. The first column of the table is the column dedicated to the frame rate. The frame rate is the number of frames your video has per second. In the case of my videos, you can see that we always have a frame rate of 25, which means that for one second of video, there are 25 images that are displayed. You can reduce this frame rate by clicking here and then selecting a new frame rate. This means here that I will divide the number of images per second by two. It means that only part of the images of my video will be analyzed. The advantage of this is that your computer will do the tracking much faster as he has two times less work to do. But it also means that you will lose a little bit of information. To illustrate this, I will put a low frame rate here and I will show you these two videos. So they are the same kind of video at the origin, but one has a high frame rate. So let's play. So this first video, as you can see, is very fluid. So we have a high frame rate. And if I now put the second video, which has a lower frame rate, as you can see now, my video is not fluid anymore because we are missing some frames. It's not a problem, uh, but you will lose a little bit of details of the information. Using the best frame rate is hard to find because it depends on the animals you are working with. For instance, if you want to track the movements of a fish, which is a quite fast animal, you will need a high frame rate. But if you are interested in tracking uh, the movement of snails, a low frame rate is probably sufficient. The second column of the table allows to crop your videos. Of course, if you don't need to crop your videos, just ignore this column and go to the next one. Cropping allows to reduce the duration of a video by removing the beginning and the end of it. For instance, if I go to check my first video, I want it to begin only after the experimenters removed these two cylinders. So to do that, I will go toward the frame of interest. To move along the video, you have here this red timeline. You can either click on the moment you want to go. You can also use this play and pause button. You can change the speed uh, at which the video is displayed. So if you want to watch your video uh, accelerated, for instance. And finally, if you want something a bit more precise, you can move frame by frame using the K arrows. In my case, I want to find the moment at which the experimenter removed this cylinder. So here it is. Now I want to be a bit more precise, so I will be my K arrows. And this is the exact moment at which I want my video to begin. So once I'm at the good moment, I will press select video start. And the moment I press, as you can see, my timeline here changed. All the part that was before this moment is now in gray and I can still watch it, 
but I have this kind of black veils here that indicate to me that I'm not inside my video anymore. If you know exactly at which moment you want your video to begin, you can also write directly here. For instance, if I want my video to begin at 60 seconds, I read 60 seconds and my timeline is updated. It's the same for the end of the video. Either you go to the moment of interest and press select video end, or you can also write directly here the duration of your video. So be careful, this is not the moment of the end, but the total duration of your video. So if I press that I want a video that begin at one minute and of a 10 minute duration, the end of my video will be at 11 minutes. Finally, you can also crop your video spatially. To do that, just click on the border of the frame and drag it toward its center. Left, right, bottom, and top. When you do that, it means to the program that you are not interested in what is happening here. Cropping spatially your videos has two advantages. The first one is that it can avoid confusion. For instance, in that case, if I'm not interested at all in what is happening with this fish, well, by cropping the video, I'm sure I won't make any mistake because I only have one fish in my video. The other big advantage is that the program knows that there is nothing to look for here, so it will just cut your video and this will make the process of tracking much faster. Now that I finished my first video, I can either press the validate button, which will bring me back to the main menu, or press the validate and go to next video. In my case, I'm interested in doing a lot of videos, so I will press the validate and go to next video. And the program will just open me the next video ready to be prepared for tracking. So I will just crop this one. I want it to begin now. This is my first frame and I want a 10 minutes video. And it's done. So I will now press validate and we will be bring back to our main menu. As you can see now, our two first videos duration is 10 minutes. You can see also that the others are much longer because I didn't crop them. And finally, you can see that the color of the button changed. Blue means that you did something, you changed something. So having an orange button doesn't mean that there is a problem, only that you didn't change anything so that it's the original video you are dealing with. Now that we have finished with the two first columns of our table, I will begin with the third one. The third column is the one dedicated to the video stabilization. It is only useful if you do have camera tremors. If it's not the case, just don't change anything here and continue with the background. If you do have camera tremors, this tool is for you. To add a stabilization, just press this button and this video will be stabilized. It's very simple to add the default stabilization, but sometimes stabilization doesn't work. And to fix this issue, there are some parameters you can change. And we will see how to do that. I will begin with my damselflies video and show you the original video. So we are here at the cropping section, one step before stabilization of the video, which means that what we see now is the video before being stabilized. As you can see, we have a lot of camera tremors in this video. To fix them, let's go to the stabilization option. In the stabilization window, you can see three panels. The first one the, is the reference frame. It is the first frame of your video, well, after cropping, and it is used by the program to find reference points, which are the red numerated points you can see. You then have your original video, in the bottom left panel here and the last one is your stabilized video. The way stabilization is working is that Animalta will look for in any frame of your video for points similar to the points of reference. It will then calculate the translation mandatory so that your image is in the same position as the reference image. We can look uh, at the result here. As you can see, my stabilized video is not moving anymore. 
you can also see that there is a black bar um so it's around i think we can see here yeah so you can see this black bar that's appearing at the top of the frame do not worry about it it won't mess with your tracking it's done in purpose in fact it's to compensate for the camera tremors it means that the part of the image that's supposed to be here is not visible due to the camera tremors animalta is compensating this by adding black pixels as you can see the default parameters of stabilization are quite good for this video because well our video is not moving anymore but if you have some problems with the stabilization with more complex videos you have a lot of options to adapt the stabilization process to your own videos the first possibility which is the simplest one is to remove the points that are not interesting as reference points for instance here the program chose to use this point as a reference but this is one of my targets, so in the individual will move during the video, which makes this point of reference useless and even potentially annoying. To remove this kind of reference point, just click on them and they will be excluded. As you can see now, the program knows that we don't want to use this point anymore. This may improve the quality of the stabilization. We can also remove that. Another way to improve your stabilization is to play with these parameters. The first of these parameters is the minimum distance between two points in pixel. If I decrease this value, you will see that the number of points will increase and that the points will be closer to each other. In the opposite, if I increase it, the number of points will decrease. This is the size of the blocks of interest. So it's how much surface the program will consider to look for its point of reference. My advice is that if you have some videos that are difficult to track, just play with this different button and try to see what the best configuration for you. The quality of the point is determined by the program itself and each point is associated with a quality value. With this parameter, you can say to the program that you don't want points with a quality lower than, well, in that case, it's lower than 0.05. And you can see that if we decrease this value, the program will accept more points. But if we increase it, the program will accept less points. And finally, the number of points maximum is how much point you can go up to. The maximum here is 300. Because if you don't have stabilized video with 300 points, I'm afraid you will not be able to stabilize your video anyway. So with these different parameters, you can play to try to have the best stabilization for your video. Usually you will see that the default parameters are sufficient. Let's now check for another video. This first video was about damselflies larvae, now we will see some cockroaches. We have here again our reference frame. As you can see, we have a much better resolution, which means that it's easier for the program to find reference points. Let's have a look to the results. As you can see, there is a strong camera movement in my original video, but in the stabilized one, this movement has been completely removed. Let's go finally to the next video, which is about fish. And we have here a lateral movement of the camera in the original video, but not in our stabilized video. So as you can see these three examples, the default parameters were sufficient to stabilize the videos. Once your video are stabilized, you can continue with the next column of the table, the creation of the background. Now that we've finished with the explanation of our three first columns, we can begin with the fourth one. This fourth column is dedicated to the creation of the background. First of all, what is a background? A background is a simple image created from your videos in which the targets are absent. If I want to show you, we can use this first video as an example. So in this video, you can see that we have a fish that's swimming inside an empty tank. 
And when we ask the program to create a background for us, what he will do is to recreate all the environment, but without the target. This kind of background is very well done. Why is that? The thing is that to work, Animalta needs a background to compare this with the image inside the video. And he will just make the comparison of the two and everything that's present in your video that's not present in the background is a target. The problem of that is that to do this image, Animalta is using a lot of image from your videos and he is doing a kind of median values. This way of working means that if one target is not moving at all during the whole video, the program is not able to understand that this is a target and not an element of the environment. For instance, if I take this second video, which is about a damsel fly swimming inside a little arenas, as you can see, there are some individuals that are not moving or very little moving. And these individuals will make problem for the background. So how to do when we have this kind of video? So first of all, we can create our automatic background and we will have a look. As you can see, we have some mark of individuals, mainly in the second bottom uh, line. You can see that one damsel fly is clearly present. So we need to correct that and to tell our program that no, this is not part of the environment. This is a target. So to do that, you just press the modify background button and you arrive here. In the modify background windows, you don't have a lot of possibility. The way it's working is just a kind of very simplistic paint. So you can paint using your left click. So here I'm painting and you can select a color using your right click. So if I select a color here, for instance, I will draw in a very dark color. If I select my color here, I will paint in white. And the objective of it is to paint in a way that your background is well done. So I will select a color close to my target with a right click and then paint on the top of it with my left click. To change the size of the tool, you can use the mouse wheel. You can also use Ctrl Z to remove things that may have been done by error. And well, that's it. You can also zoom in and zoom out if you need to be more precise. So to zoom in, you press Ctrl and click and you zoom in and Ctrl and right click to zoom out. So in my case, I will just do my video properly here and here. And that's done. If let's say that uh, you made a mistake and you want to find the original background again, you can ask the program to redo the automatic background. Or even in some cases, if really the automatic background is not well done, you can just use the first frame of the video. And in that case, well, you will need to do the work and remove all of the targets, but it's still an option in the case that you are not satisfied with the automatic background. Well, as you can see here, what I'm doing is not art. It's not very beautiful and everyone can see that there have been some image modification here. But that's not a problem because it's not at all the objective. The objective is just that more or less the color of the background is a good one. Don't worry too much. You don't need to do something perfect. And that's all for the background column. So let's continue with the next one, which will be the definition of arenas. Now that we've finished with the creation of the background, we will see the next step, which is the definition of the arenas. For this step, I will use three different videos. The first one with two fish in two separated arenas, one with the vacuum robot, which is in a single arena. And the last one will be about damselflies, which are in eight different arenas. As you may have understand, an arena is defined as the place inside which your targets are. Arenas must be defined in a way that a target cannot leave them nor switch from one arena to another. 
If you don't want to add any arenas, you can also leave this column the way it is, and in that case, the program will consider that the wool frame is one single arena. If I go to my first video, I have here, as I told you, two different arenas. I can choose here the shape of my arena, so in that case, I want rectangles, and I can do like this. In that case, my video is not perfectly horizontal, so I need to add a third point here. Then I will press the return key on your keyboard to validate the current arena and to be able to draw another one. And then I can draw my second arena. If you change your mind and something is not as you want it, you can change an existing arena by just clicking on the points and moving them around. You can also delete an existing point. To do so, click on the point and then press the delete key in your keyboard. You can also move a complete arena by clicking on the border of this arena and moving it. For instance, like this. You can combine different shapes. Here, I just want two rectangular arenas, but we could imagine that we have something a bit more original. For instance, we could have something like this. If I do something like this, it means that I have one arena with this shape. If you want to see the, how the arenas look like, you have the view button here. This shows you which arenas you will be using later. If two shapes are touching each other, the program will consider that it is a single arena. If you have a doubt, you have here a counter of the number of arenas visible. As you can see, if I do something like this, I will have a single arena occupying almost all the space. Instead of removing a point by point, you can also remove a complete shape. For instance, I want to remove my ellipse here. Press the remove the current shape button. For the ellipse, if you put only two points, you will have a circle, and if you add more points, you will have something that's ellipsoidal. You can also remove all the arenas present in a frame by using the Remove All button. and enter to validate, and it's on for my first video. Let's now continue with my next video, which is uh, the one with the vacuum robot. We saw with the first video that we can do ellipses and rectangles, but you can also do polygons. So for this video, it will be something like this. And okay, one point here, and it's done. And you can check with the view button how it will look like. Seems quite good. And let's go to my last video, which is the one with the damsel flies. I will define my first arena here. As you can see, I have a lot of arenas, which are similar, so I don't want to lose time to click on the borders each time. I prefer to duplicate my arenas. So to do so, I press the Shift K and I click on the border of my defined arena before moving it. Finally, you can also rotate and resize an existing arena. To rotate an arena, you just press your R key on the keyboard and then click right in the border of the arena. Then just move the cursor of your mouse around and as you can see, the arena will be rotated. To resize an arena, it's Shift plus right click on the border of the arena.
Don't forget that if you have a doubt at any moment, you always have the information panel here, which summarizes everything I explained. I finished with my last video, so I will now validate. And as you can see, like always, my buttons are not changed to blue. So it means that I defined some arenas for this video. And I can also have a look to how these arenas look like. And well, that's it for the arena section. And we can continue with our last column, which is the definition of the scale. Now we will see how to define a scale, which is the last column of our table. And to do that, I will illustrate it with three different videos, all with very different scales. So the first one is a spider. The second one is a mouse inside an elevated plus maze. And my last one is a video recorded with a microscope to uh, record the phagocytosis of myxamibs. So I will directly go to my uh, scale column and press define scale. What you need to do now is to indicate in the image two points between which you know the distance. For instance, I know that between this point and this one, I have 10 centimeter. So I can write here that I have 10 centimeter between my two points. And the program will calculate the ratio of pixel per centimeter. Do not forget to indicate here which is your unit. So in my case, I put 10 centimeter, but I could also have written 100 millimeter. Of course, both are working. Then let's continue to my next video. In this case, I don't really have a rule, but I know that the distance between this and this is uh, 80 centimeter because I know the length of my branches. Validate and go to next video. This one is a bit more tricky because we don't have a ruler, but thanks to the microscope, we already know the ratio of the image. So in that case, you can directly write here the ratio if you know it. This one was the last column of our table, so it's now the end of this tutorial. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope to see you for the next tutorial, which will be about the preparation of the tracking. Have a nice day!